Growing up, I always wanted to have a large bowl of M&Ms on the coffee table, but buying this many M&Ms made Beck a little bit suspicious. Um, they're for science. Luckily, there's some super cool science activities that we can do with these M&Ms. Are you ready? Then let's get science. A packet of M&Ms contains six colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and brown. But how do we know if this M&M was made using the color green or a mix of blue and yellow? And what about these other colors? Which are made from only one color and which are made from a mix of colors? To answer this question, we need a way to separate each color from the others. And the way we'll do this is through paper chromatography. To do this at home, you will need coffee filter paper, a tool container, pop sticks and clips, toothpicks, water, and of course, a few M&Ms. Beck, I need to buy some more M&Ms. The M&Ms I bought in Australia might use different colors to those where you live. So if this activity doesn't work for you, try to find a colored candy that lists these colors in the ingredients list. Start by cutting the coffee filter paper into a rectangle that's six centimeters wide and 12 centimeters long. Next, use a pencil to draw a line one and a half centimeters from one end and mark out six evenly spaced points along this line. With the pencil, label each point R, O, Y, G, B, and BR, and then put this to one side. Next, place six drops of water on a clean plate, add a different colored M&M to each drop, and wait for two minutes. After two minutes, remove the M&Ms. Some of each color should have dissolved in the drops of water. At this point, cut the ends off six toothpicks so that they're still a little pointy, but not as pointy as before. Then dip the cut end into a color and touch it to the corresponding point on the filter paper. Repeat this for all the other colors using a new toothpick each time. This should leave a spot of each color on the filter paper. Wait two minutes for the spots to dry and then add another spot of each color to the filter paper using the same toothpicks from before. Try to keep these spots as small as possible. Repeat those steps another five times to get a really good color sample. We're now ready to separate the colors. To do this, attach the filter paper to a pop stick and suspend it inside the tool container. Add a mark to the container to indicate where the base of the paper sits and then remove the paper. Next, Fill the container with water until it's about half a centimeter above this mark. Then place the filter paper back inside the container, gently lower it into the water and add a piece of clear wrap to the top. And now we wait. You should quickly check that the samples are all above the water level. If they aren't, then they'll dissolve in this pool of water and you'll need to start again. Over time, the water moves up the paper by capillary action. As it does this, it carries the colors with it, but the colors move at different speeds. Some move quite quickly, while others move quite slowly. Because of these different speeds, mixtures of colors are separated into individual colors. Let this run until the water is about one centimeter from the top of the paper. At this point, remove the paper and dry it with a hairdryer. This piece of paper with spots of different colors is called a chromatogram. Let's take a closer look to see what it shows us. The first thing we notice is that the red, orange, yellow, and blue samples each produced a single spot on the chromatogram. Here, 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 and here. That's not surprising because the packet listed colors 129, 110, 102, and 133, which are known to be red, orange, yellow, and blue. But what about the samples from the green and brown M&Ms? The green sample produced two spots, one that was yellow and one that was blue. So that suggests the green M&M is made up of colors 102 and 133. The brown sample produced three spots, one that was red, one that was orange, and one that was blue. So that suggests the brown M&M is made up of colors 129, 110, and 133. So the next time you look at a green or brown M&M, just remember that the green color actually comes from blue and yellow coloring and the brown color comes from red, orange and blue coloring. Now it's time for you to try this at home 
and for me to try this with Skittles. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on Silly Science with Simon. Beck, I'm just heading to the shops.